Now, social media in Nigeria has, in the last 13 years, become an avenue for people, governments, as well as public and private institutions uh, to use to share thoughts on quite a number of programs, as well as other stuff. Now, along the lines, things have changed, not only in Nigeria, but the world over, and that has attracted the spotlight on the street that was once upon a free one. Countries, both in the developed and developing world, have already put in place laws as well as measures in varying degrees to regulate the social media. And that will be our focus on the program today. But first, let's see what made the trends in the social media in the past week. A bill seeking to establish an agency for repentant Boko Haram members got Nigerians talking on whether or not the agency is necessary. While some agreed with the Yobe-born senator who sponsored it, others, including his counterpart from Burunu, Ali Ndume, totally rejected it. Britain's Tyson Fury delivered a dominant performance in his heavyweight championship bout with Deontay Wilder on Saturday, overwhelming his opponent to earn a seventh-round TKO victory in Las Vegas in the highly anticipated Superfight rematch between the two titans. Well, there you go. Those were some of the trends that we had in the past week. That's what people were talking more about. But we have with us in the studio, first of all, Ayodili Adio, a publisher of an online newspaper, a uh, new digital uh, media strategist, as well as a public analyst. Thanks for joining us on the program today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, we also have with us again Ayoba Miladipo. He is a media practitioner, a public affairs analyst, as well as a businessman. Thanks as well for joining us on the program. Thanks for having me. Joining us uh, right here in Lagos via our virtual reality interface is Hamzat Lawal, an activist who specializes in practical issues associated with climate change, open data, advocacy campaigns, as well as development policies. Hamzat, it's a pleasure to have you today on the program. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Kickstart this conversation for us, Hamzat. Um, what would you say has gone wrong, I mean, since the inception of social media that has drawn the attention of government and, so to speak now, um, regulators that has, you know, brought us to where we are at the moment? I think that our regulators, our lawmakers are trying to play catch up. That's why they're scared and are trying to regulate and stifle voices of citizens. I'm not sure anything has really gone wrong, but rather they're not looking at social media from an opportunistic perspective. Rather, they're looking at it that, well, this is some platform that citizens have always had their views, had their grievances, and also contribute towards governance. You know, and I believe those views are not the views that the policymakers want to hear. So now they're saying, well, let's introduce a law that would uh, regulate these guys and maybe stifle those voices so that we would not hear all those noise in the background. All right, I'll come back to you in just a bit. Um, so he's taking, looking at it from this perspective, but if you look at the fact that even the social media companies are now under the spotlight, you know, that means somewhere, somehow, something is not going on, right? Either it's from the, the companies themselves or the users of these platforms. But what's, what do you think has gone wrong? I mean, clearly, um, there's been abuse um, across the world. Um, but what countries in Europe have done intelligently or cleverly, if you'd like, is to put pressure on the companies and the service providers to regulate effectively. So when you post fake news or when terrorists try to use the social media to recruit young people, um, they have a way of taking those content down. Um, the difference you have between what happens in overseas and what is happening in Nigeria is that the spotlight is turned inwards. So the responsibility has been pushed to the citizens to live up 
um, to play in the role of editors now, if you'd like. Now, the problem principally with the bills that are being proposed is the fact that three things stand out. One is the fact that statements that are issued um, that looks to bring down public confidence um, in the work of government officials. The second, of course, is the fact that statements that are issued that could affect the outcome of elections. And third, statements that are prejudicial um, to the security of the country. So these three issues are the critical issues that people fundamentally disagree with because the idea of an election is to put out statements in a campaign that, of course, influence voter decision alternatively. If you pass such a bill, what you're saying in the essence is that opposition politics can no longer function. And it means at the back of your mind, what you're trying to do is to perpetuate yourself in power, mm. which does not make any sense. And well, secondly... That's, that's, that's pretty much uh, subjective, so to speak now. But um, Ayobami, let me just um, come to you now. One thing he made mention of above is the fact that it is critical as we are, as, I mean, as it is uh, right now in the country and even the world um, over. But um, again, the issue of um, responsibility... Okay. Um, well, I also understand that there's been the, uh, the abuse over the last, um, not even the last 13 years, probably in the last um, three, four, five years. And majorly, come to Nigeria, majorly when it comes to, when it has to do with politics. Now, in Nigeria now, there's a, reg there's a bit of a regulation at the moment. There's something called the Cybercrime Act. It's not a bill, it's a law. Now, I'm ask, I, I would ask a question. I think my question would be, what exactly are they trying to regulate? What is social media regulation? What exactly is the minister talking about? When, it, when uh, I've read about this since, I think they started this last year, about the need to regulate the social media. Mm -hmm. When there's an existing law that's called Cybercrime Act. Mm -hmm. The Cybercrime Act addresses everything that's related to social media, fake news, libelous um, publications, and all of it, cyber stalking, and the rest of it. Now, since the commencement, of, since that law, uh, since that bill became a law, publishers, notable publishers, bloggers, influencers, and the rest of it have actually become a victim. Some have gone to jail. Some are still in jail. Some have been freed. It depends on whatever alleged crime you've committed. So, because, because, so, so for me, I feel having a cybercrime act already balances this equation. It means that if I publish something that is wrong... Or so, if I, so you, in if, other words, you're saying there is no need to bring up something... There is really new. no need for anything but called the, social media the, regulation. The, yeah, so because, the, sorry, the, Victor, because uh, can you regulate the, the, the content in the, mindset, in the minds of the average Nigerian? Can you regulate their tweet? Even if the companies, the social media platforms, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, are trying to probably use keywords and all of that and to, 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 tone, to, it le to, to tone it down and to work on their algorithm. But still, we can, you can weave your words ar around with civil content and still deliver the same message. Let's, 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 uh, okay, I get where you're going to, but let's uh, quickly go back to Abuja, um, where Hamzad is staying. So, Hamzad, one of the things that um, Ayobami made mention of is the fact that, oh, um, the government's now, he's talking about locally here in Nigeria, um, looking at how the government is coming in. But the government has also said that it will soon set up a committee that will probably be part of um, the regulations that will come into play. Um, if, for instance now, people like uh, people who are pretty much playing in the space are part of um, that committee, do you think that will at least have um, a better document that will regulate the space? Um, no, I, I don't think so. And, and again, this is us trying to use public resources, you know, to wastage. Uh, why are you trying to regulate users when countries like Canada are big on the technology giant company? Because, of course, social media is a platform and it is left for users to use it positively or negatively. But then again, it is left for those people who provided those platforms to ensure that they provide regulation. In Nigeria, what we expect our lawmakers to do is to do, have a public hearing and bring Facebook, bring Twitter, bring Instagram, bring YouTube, and speak to them on how they can regulate this content. I know government is now saying hate speech. So how do we define hate speech? Is it because you are a ruling class and you don't like what the opposition class is saying, or because you have a new policy that citizens are not happy with, and then you call that hate speech? I think that we need to think and look at the future. These people who are proposing this regulation probably will be the first beneficiary of this regulation because there's a clause that says that when you promote hate speech on social media, you know, you'll be hung. So they, 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 they will be dead by hanging. Now, probably this lawmaker would be the first people to enjoy it because after 2023, 
Some of them might not be in parliament. And you're proposing a bill that stiffens the freedom of expression, the right of citizens. Then if we don't want to pro practice democracy in Nigeria, we should just tell ourselves that, oh, you know, we want to set aside democracy. And then we can have a conversation on probably what would work. But you can't come and say you want to form a committee. You already have these bills proposed at par in parliament. And, you know, you're bent on passing this bill into law. That's 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 uncalled for. Uh, Hamza, let me let me just uh, quickly bring to your notice that I mean it's this this regulation is not only taking place in Nigeria. I mean even some of those countries like Canada, you made mention of um, their near, their near neighbors. Um, that's the United States. You have the UK, China, Russia, India. You know. All these countries are talking about regulations. Don't you think it is pretty much like uh, a norm now globally and perhaps we are also towing the line? Oh, yes. It's a norm globally. Uh, and, of course, we need to regulate uh, the, the giant, the technology giant. And I'm glad you made mention of all these countries. Why are we not copying uh, Canada, for instance, in providing access to health care and education? Why are we not copying the United States? state to ensure that citizens' rights are protected? Why are we not up in the United Kingdom, you know, to ensure that, you know, every child goes to school? You have quality for education. But we're rather, we want to copy countries, you know, to regulate social media and regulate citizens. But we don't want to ensure that the rights and freedom of liberty of these citizens are protected. You know, we copy bad things and we leave the good ones. I'll come back to you in a bit. I mean, that's also, again, another subjective comment, speaking about uh, we copy good things and, uh, and, and leave, or we copy the bad things and leave the good ones out. Uh, but um, again, so it's, a, it's becoming, it's a global thing. You know, he might have his own um, perception as to why, you know, we are copying some of the things and not copying what he calls or, you know, terms as bad. But if, if you look at that, I mean, the fact that the spotlight is there you know, should give you some form of concern. Because again, now I want to come back to responsibility. It is how you, how you use the social media that makes, you know, basically just look at the society. Why do you have the police? Why do you have the soldiers? Why do you have all of these people around, you know, to make the society governable and in peace? Why is it now different? Because it's the social media. Victor, let's call a spade what it is, another family implement. Um, he's mentioned it, Hamzat has mentioned it. The Cyber Act 2015 deals extensively with issues of fake news, of um, pursuing bigotry online and all of those things. The, the defamation law yeah. of Nigeria deals with issues of libel, libel and slander, right? So you have enough laws that deal with all these issues. The provisions that have been added in this bill that is being pursued is what I'm trying to explain to you, one of which, or cardinal of which is, citizens should not statements that seem as though it is eroding the confidence of public officials in the work that they are doing. You need to understand, first of all, Victor, that chapter two of the Nigerian constitution, right, proposes the rights of citizens in 12 sections from 13 to 24. The rights of citizens, economic, social, human right laws, but the constitution says that they are non-justiceable, which means you cannot sue the government for not providing basic infrastructure for you. You cannot sue the government for not providing health care. You cannot sue the government for not even providing its basic primary responsibility, which is security and welfare of the citizens. Then people are now proposing again to say that you cannot also now criticize government for performing poorly. Well, now that's, 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 that's double that's, jeopardy that's, at the end of the day. That's actually one bit, you know, of the whole pie. Um, you know, it's a just, significant. It is significant, significant, exactly. Piece. But just hold your thoughts for a bit. Let me just take a look at this tweet. Uh, it's by Henry Okilwe, and he says, if we had insisted on all of us using these platforms responsibly, these days of government regulation might never have come. And that's why I was speaking about, you know, other parts, you know, you know that is pretty much very important, yeah. you know, as we try to regulate... Okay, um, we're, not, we're not looking at cyberbullying. Yeah, okay. we're, not, we're not looking at all of online fraud and all of these <clears> things. <throat> I mean, we pretty much are focusing on the government. That's just one part of it. Mm -hmm. Pretty much vital as well. But, I mean, there are other modules and other reasons why these regulations keep coming up. Okay, like uh, I think I've said this before. See, we understand that there's an abuse. Not just on the government side, even when it comes to business, even as individuals. So even libel is not peculiar to government or government officials all alone. As an individual, I can wake up tomorrow and say, okay, Victor's done something wrong to me and I want to post this false news about him. I want to damage him. I want to say something that he has not done. 
So we understand all of this. But I believe that government should find a way to sensitize the people rather than, because already, because for me, the fact that there's a cyber act means that there is something in place. So are you saying they're duplicating? It, it, more of a duplication. Now, even the Nigerian government, I feel there's a bit of a confusion. The Minister of Digital, um, of digital Communications, Communication uh, digital Dr. Economy. Pantami, said, Communications and Digital and, and Economy, di and digital economy said there is, no, there is no such thing as social media monitoring. Now, him using the word social media monitoring. Meanwhile, the Minister of Information, al Ajilai Mohamed, is talking about social media Regulation. regulation and now there's a cyber crime act that's been a law since 2015 so what exactly are they regulating how come we can't have just one means of regulation so it's either you're expanding the, uh, the cyber crime act and trying to accommodate whatever you feel that is not uh, has never been a part of it or you're, dupli you're duplicating the same thing but basically if we have to be sincere with ourselves this looks like and have an avenue to silence the, the voice of not just the people, I mean, of not just the opposition, but the voice of the people. What, what should we be doing differently, uh, Mario Daly, quickly? I mean, um, we might decide that you want to educate citizens to be a lot more responsible with the way they interact on social media. But I believe strongly, um, like he has rightfully said, and like we have all argued, um, the laws are extensive and they cover every human interaction, you know, that tends to bother on infringement of human rights, uh, whether it's a cyber law, the Cyber Act of 2015, or the slander or the defamation law, um, clearly um, covers all of those provisions such that if I defame you, I can sue you to court and seek redress, you know, in the court of law. So I believe we already have laws that deal with these issues quite extensively. The idea that we need to spend um, resources, but that's time and monetary, I um, mean, trying to put together you, you another... Know, so, so one thing, sorry, it, it just sorry, to, sorry to budding, but I mean, have we... Have we, have we um, um, follow those laws. I mean, have they been have they been put? In People place? have been jailed in all yes. those laws. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, the numbers are extensive. Um, popular of which is Soware was charged on those laws uh, for cyber bullying. Um, Abba Jalingo, Abba Jalingo has just left jail. Um, a couple of so what law did you use to arrest people. and, and lock mm -hmm. him up? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have been charged to court of that. Um, the, so basically, social media is governed. It's, it's governed. It's governed. It's extensively governed. Mm -hmm. So I, the, the idea that you still want to expend time and monetary resources to look into what is not missing is completely beyond me. Let me bring back Hamzat um, into the conversation. Hamzat, um, so speaking about you know governing the social media as well as the internet, um, so we've actually spoken extensively on all of that but what again should we be doing differently because if you look at other countries they have invited uh, some of these social media platforms you know to appear before their before their um, committees that's their congresses um, would you prefer to see something like that done here as well uh, technology is here to stay and technology it's about democracy and ensuring sustained voices I had I met with the founder and CEO of Twitter at uh, the tail end of last year. And, you know, we had a conversation on how Twitter can update their algorithm and also ensure regulation so that they can bring down content that are inflammatory in, in nature. But this is the kind of conversation our lawmakers should have with the founders of Twitter uh, and Facebook rather than, you know, clamping down on genuine voices. And, and if government, what can government do better? I think they should focus more on enforcement, you know, the existing laws, build the capacities of the enforcement officers so that they know what to do, when and how. You All know, right. let's invest more on human capital development. And when you leave young people unemployed, and then you're giving them platform to engage in social vices, our current unemployment rate is over 23%. Why can't we work and use technology to reduce, you know, this percentage? We cannot right. be the poverty capital of the world and paying the highest lawmaker in the world and then get them to come up with ideas of social media bill, hate speech bill, uh, uh, NGO regulatory bill. All if right, they I'm don't sorry. have ideas, let them reach out. We can give them these ideas for right, charge and regulate to, citizens and bring about... I'd, you know, have to say, I'd, I'd have to say thank you again, I mean, for coming on the program today and sharing your thoughts. Uh, you are here with us in Lagos, but, uh, of course, via the virtual reality interface from our Buja Studios. Thanks again for being part of the program today. Thank you for having me, Victor. You're welcome. Um, Ayadele, um, Adieu, as well as Ayabami um, Ladipo, thanks again to you two for being part of the program as well. Um, again,
it's hopefully, I mean, would we'll go back to when social media was just that, you know, place where we had fun, posted pictures, you know, had interactions and all of that. Thank you again. Thank you. But that's uh, where we are. We'll be back with the movie videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Please stay with us. The debate between members of Nigeria's top political parties, APC and the PDP, over the leaked memos of senior members of the Buhari presidency begins this week's most viewed videos in fifth place. I think the fact that a leaked memo or a letter or a memo written by the National Security Advisor is being leaked to the public means that there is no coordination, there is no sense of organization in the presidency, as it were, and by extension, it means it, it confirms the public uh, uh, perception that there are too many power blocks in the presidency. The synergy of those who ought to even manage the information from the presidency down to those who are handling these issues have had a crack. And I think it is the duty of the opposition to point this out, that they are doing it, they are doing nothing extra. It is in their duty and within their purview to do so. Fourth sees the Emir of Kanu in his usual truth speaking mode, urging Northern leaders to do better during the 60th birthday celebration of Cardinal State Governor Nasir al Rufai. We need to get our Northern youth to a point where they don't need to rely on being from a part of the country to get a job. And believe me, if we don't listen, there will be a day when there will be a constitutional amendment that addresses this issue of quota system and federal character. The rest of the country cannot be investing, educating its children, producing graduates, and then they watch us, they can't get jobs because they come from the wrong state, when we have not invested in the education of our own children. Third spot is taken by the video of Instagram sensation, speaking on her parents' support for her online fame and job. I said, Mom, I told you I want to travel to Lagos, but you're telling me no. And I went to tell my dad. And now he said yes, and you're feeling... So, they like what I do. My mom even gives me... Ideas. <laughs> Dropping by a sport on the chart, the confession made by killers of billionaire businessman Ignatius Odinukwe takes the second sport. Yeah, that's why I invited him when I invited him over the property sale. And I, I invited him to my hotel room. And he came to my hotel room. Before then, I've, they've already stationed in my room. So when he came, we were able to, I screamed at him at the point of trying to grip his fears. They were able to get him from the back and um, I feel very bad and uh, it wasn't what I planned in my life because I, I didn't even think of killing anybody before then because what happened, I don't even know how it happened. It wasn't my intention to kill you. I have not done killed in my life before. Okay. I was annoyed because I, I was helpless. I, I need someone to assist me and that was why he invited me. That I did. It was him himself, the back of the... Uh, yes, he hit him by the back, not the sharp side. While a new entrant takes the first, we are fiery lawyer Falana maintains that President Buhari broke the law by asking Nigerians not to protest. Members of the public have been warned to be very careful. Uh, people have been paid. 2,000 people have been mobilized, as it were, to breach the peace of the country. And the implication of that is that we're going to stop. And that's the program this week. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. Don't forget, keep your comments coming via the hashtags or channels beam at Victor underscore MBIDI as well as social media regulation. Thank you for watching.